Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. I'm Peter Levy and today we're on tip number 47. How much do you know about the traction control in your car? How familiar are you with slip start, traction control, traction loss and the way it's controlled? Some of you are saying no at all and that's fine. Here's an episode you can then just skip. But what I'd like to do is to dig into the purpose of traction control as a computer controlled mechanism for ensuring that our car stays in good contact with the road and doesn't lead to terrible disasters or accidents for us. So first of all, traction, what is that? Well, to gain traction means to be able to move forward. If the car has traction, it means it has a good grip on the road. When we lose traction, frequently an occurrence when we're driving through snow, mud, loose sand, all of those environments could cause the wheels to lose traction, meaning they will begin to slip. Traction control is a computer controlled mechanism that tries to ensure that our wheels do not slip unnecessarily. Or if they do, the car will take measures to control that. How does it do that? Well, the car controls two things, the pressure on the brakes and the power of the motor. In other words, if you wanted to stop a wheel from spinning helplessly, you could do it two ways. The brake could be applied or the power could be reduced on the motor so that that wheel is no longer attempting to propel the car forward. Of course, in practice, it's a combination of the two. Now, on a four wheel or all wheel car, all four wheels are under the control of this traction control mechanism. On a rear wheel drive Model 3, such as mine and many others, what happens is that the rear wheels have traction control enabled. with traction control is that there are some very limited circumstances in which it's counterproductive. In other words, preventing the wheels from slipping gets you nowhere. An example of that, you're in slushy, icy snow conditions, or you're in sand, beach sand or gravel, or worse, you're in slippery mud. Now, in any of those, if the car prevents the wheel from turning and slipping, it'll also prevent any possibility of you getting ahead and getting out of trouble. There is a mechanism in the car called slip start. Traction control in your car, in your Model 3, is on by default. So when would we want traction control to be disabled? Well, if we were in slippery mud, snow that was very slushy, loose gravel, where would we find that? How would we do it? We go down to the controls, bottom left. We look for driving. And while the manual tells you there should be a section called traction control, I don't see it. I don't have it here. I do have slip start at the very bottom. And I can turn it on. And what that means? Your wheels will be able to slip. The purpose of that would be to get you to exert a bit of force in trying to drive out of a difficult situation. The icon that appears says slip start is enabled. TC stands for traction control. With a line through it, traction control is not in effect right now. Slip start has been enabled and traction control disabled. And when you've got yourself out of that jam, the recommendation is simple. Go back to the slip start control and turn it off. Like that. Close. So clearly, if you're bogged down in sand or mud or snow, engaging slip start will allow the car's wheels to spin a little. What does that do? It then enables the wheels to engage with the substrate to try and regain traction. The manual is very clear that we should not use slip start 
unnecessarily, and once we've got ourselves out of the trouble, we should disengage as I showed you a few moments ago in the car. I'm back in the car and uh, let's see what happens uh, when I hammer it. Let's go. Three, two, one. It's hammer time. Oh, I'm hammering it right now. She's barely moving. Let's see what happens here. Wow, this is pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. I cannot make the rear end um, spin. Or sorry, um, fishtail or whatever. It's, uh, let's kind of move back around here and try this again. All right, hammer time. I'm hammering it, I'm hammering it. Let's see, let's, come on, spin out, spin out, spin out. Nope, I cannot make this fragger spin out. This is amazing for a rear wheel drive. Um, I am seriously impressed. I don't know what else to say, but uh, I wish that I had someone else kind of filming this from, from the outside. Of course, some people deliberately disengage at high wheel speeds in order to do a donut. Here's an example. This is not a performance car. It does not have track mode. It is an all wheel drive, all four drive, but you can see what the owner got up to after disengaging the traction control, meaning engaging slip star. That is not what Tesla recommends. I sat watching that in absolute horror at the torture being inflicted on the tires. If you've got more money than you know what to do with, why don't you donate it to my PayPal mechanism instead of burning the rubber on the road and having to get new tires every 2,000, 3,000 miles. I, it's worth practicing. No matter whether you have a rear wheel drive or an all wheel drive, you should deliberately under safe conditions, get yourself into difficult traction conditions like slippery snow or sand and try out engaging slip start and trying to get out of trouble using that. I've had to do it on a number of occasions. We had some terrible snow here in North Vancouver. It's easy to go up a hill when the road is slushy and terrible if you can take a run at it. So I was ready to go up onto the freeway, which has a bit of an incline. I took a run in it, only the cars ahead of me chickened out and stopped, literally stopped to try and inch their way up. Well, that was it. I was stuck. I have a rear wheel drive. There were no snow tires on at the time. I was stuck. The only way I got out of there was to engage slip start and be able to spin the wheels enough to get some traction to be able to move. So that's an example of when you would want to use slip start. But for the rest of our driving, we should not be doing that. I hope that gives you a much clearer concept of what traction control is all about, what it's designed to accomplish, and hope that you don't have to use the slip start very often, because that would mean you're driving in terrible conditions. So that's it for today. This is Wednesday's tip of the day, and tomorrow we'll be on to episode number 48 for the last tip of the day this week. Thanks again for watching. Love to read your comments. And as you already know by now, I read pretty much every comment and I try and answer them. Take care of your car, watch what you drive it through, and I will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Cheers for now.